so glad that you are here today with us. If you are visiting with us today, welcome, welcome, welcome to Life Church. So glad that you are here. If you are joining us live stream and uh, through our live streaming service, welcome to our service today. So glad that you chose to tune in with us. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, I'd like to follow along with me. I'll be coming out of Genesis chapter 38. going to look at verses 27 through 30 in Genesis chapter 38. Good. Thank you. Genesis chapter 38. When you have it, say amen. If you are still looking for Genesis, you are in trouble. You can be classified as a non-Bible reader if you were still looking for Genesis. <laughs> Genesis chapter 38, let's start in verse 27. And it came to pass in the time of her travail that, behold, twins were in her womb. It came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand. And the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread, saying, This came out first. It came to pass as he drew back his hand that, behold, his brother came out she said how hast thou broken forth this breach be upon thee therefore his name was called Perez and afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand and his name was called Zerah father I thank you for your word for the anointing that is upon your word I ask you now God to anoint these lips of clay God that I can speak your word to your people today and God that we would receive from you what you would have for us to and we ask this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated if you would like. I have preached on this passage of Scripture numerous times in my ministry, but there's some things I want to share with you out of this text today that I feel like is vital for the day and age that we live in today. And I want to preach to you this morning on the topic, the house of Pharaohs the house of Perez. Uh, to understand what is going on when we pick up this text, I've got to paint you a picture uh, about the relationship between Judah and Tamar, the, the woman that our text is talking about this morning of giving birth to twins is a woman by the name of Tamar. Now, we all know who Judah was, uh, one of the leaders of the tribes of Israel, um, one of the sons of Jacob. And Judah had a son, and he married a woman by the name of Tamar. While while that son was married to Tamar, he passed away. Now, it was customary in those days that if uh, your, his, the son's brother would marry his brother's wife to keep his lineage going, to keep his line going. So what would happen is, is one of Judah's other sons would have to marry Tamar. And according to custom, that took place. Well, that son also died. So Judah's other son then was younger and was not old enough to be married. So Judah told Tamar, he says, go back to your father's house. And when my son gets of age, I'll call for you and he can marry you as is customary. But Judah did not keep true to that word when his son got older and his son got old enough. Uh, he did not send for Tamar, so all this time Tamar is sitting at her father's house, still wearing widow's garments, still waiting on her name to be called, and it did, and her name did not get called. So one day she heard that Judah was coming to town, so she dressed herself as a prostitute, and she sat on the side of the road. And as Judah passed by, Tamar said, "You know." Uh, how you doing? And they began to talk, and they struck up a bargain, and Judah went into Tamar, and she became pregnant. Okay? So now we pick up this story where Tamar is giving birth to twins. Judah wanted to have Tamar killed because he thought that she had went stepped out and had broken the covenant when he didn't keep his word. Isn't it ironic that people want to talk about somebody for doing the same thing they did? People want to get upset with somebody for doing the same thing they did. He, he was upset at Tamar and wanted to have her killed, and then she finally produced to him uh, the object that he gave her, 
and said, you the father. They didn't need Mari Povich or, or uh, Jerry Springer to, to tell them who the daddy was. She was like, it, it's yours. Y'all all looking at me. Y'all know y'all watch them shows. Y'all so sanctified. <laughs> but So Judah and Tamar, so what, what you got to understand is, and we pick up the story where she's giving birth to the twins. So now that we understand that, I want to jump into this. Tamar, though, was wearing her widow's garments, and she was wearing these garments, and that's what's showing that she was still in mourning until it was time for her to, to, um, to uh, be married again. But Tamar decided that she was going to take off her widow's garments and have an encounter with Judah. Now, we know that in the Bible, Judah stands for praise. Judah's name actually means praise. Sometimes you have to take off what you've been going through and just praise God. You say, I may not feel like praising God. You don't know what I'm going through. But there comes times in life that you just have to just uh, uh, take off what you've been going through. Take off all the, all the hurt, all the pain, all the, all the stuff you've been going through and say, I'm going to just praise God in spite of. Because everybody that's praising may not just be everything peachy king in their life. Uh, they may have something going on in their life that you know nothing about. They may be facing some battles. They may be going through difficulties. But they choose that I'm not going to wear that garment. I'm going to wear a garment of praise. And I'm going to praise God in spite of. Amen. So she took off what she was going through and had an encounter with praise. And as a result of her encounter she becomes pregnant so Tamar is pregnant with the seed of praise she's pregnant with the seed of praise you know if you can learn how to praise regardless your life will be much better if you can learn how to praise God regardless that's why Job could say in the shape that he was in he said though he slay me yet will I trust him you know, no matter what he's going through, I can just praise God. Hey, when you can be pregnant with a seed of praise, that no matter what the enemy throws at you, no matter what you go through, you can say, to God be the glory. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When you can learn how to praise God in spite of, you will live a victorious life. You shouldn't have to have somebody pump you up before you praise God. You can praise God right by yourself. Some of the best church I've ever had was riding down the road by myself or sitting in a deer stand by myself, just me and God. So as Tamar, the Bible says at the time of her travail, she begins to give birth, and there were twins in her womb. As she starts to give birth, this is straight out of the book, one of the babies sticks his arm out. And the nursemaid says, this one is firstborn. And she ties a scarlet ribbon around his wrist. And then the baby pulls his arm back in. Okay, y'all tracking. That would have freaked me out to start with. So one of the babies sticks out his arm. And then she went ahead and labeled him firstborn. But all of a sudden, the baby pulled his arm back in. He had been labeled firstborn, but then he withdrew back into the womb. In other words, he was on his way out, but then he found himself right back where he started. Are y'all all right? Many times in our lives, it will seem like we're on our way out of a situation. But then all of a sudden, we find ourselves right back where we started from. It feels like everything's about to break forth. We're about to get out of this mess. We're about to get out of what we've been going through. But then all of a sudden we turn around and we're right back where we started. This baby stuck his arm out. He was on his way out. But all of a sudden he found himself right back where he started. You see, you'll start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But then you're right back where you started. The reason that the baby had to draw his arm out and put his arm out and draw it right back in is because the baby was not in the proper birthing position. The Bible says that baby, or, or not, according to God's design, not the Bible, according to God's design, babies come out head first. Are y'all with me? Babies come out head first. They don't come out arms first. So, y'all stick with me. The baby was not in the proper position. So the baby who put out his arm was not in the proper birthing position. In other words, you have to position yourself correctly if you ever want to come out of what you're going through. 
You've got to learn how to get yourself in the right place. Uh, you have to position yourself where you can get in front of whoever's hiring if you need a job. you got to position yourself. we got too many folks trying to come out any old kind of way, and then when it doesn't happen like they want it to, they get mad at God. They want to do what they want to do. They want to act the way they want to act and then expect God to fix everything for them. And they're not even trying to help themselves. There comes a time where you've got to prove to God you want to help yourself. Amen. Are y'all all right this morning? I don't have many amens. It must be hitting home. So we've got to, we've got to learn how to help ourselves. There comes a time when everybody else can't do it for you. You've got to help yourself. There comes a time if you, well, if you want a better marriage, ask, instead of saying, God, fix it, God, fix it, start working on it yourself. If you want better finances, start working on them yourself. Amen? If you want, if you want better kids, start working on it yourself. Quit letting YouTube and Xbox raise them and you start raising them. That's good preaching, preacher. Want to know why kids are so violent? Because we're letting Halo raise them. Some of y'all don't know what Halo is and, and things like that. Uh, we're letting all these video games raise kids instead of we're raising them. There's nothing, don't say preachers preaching against video games. I'm just, I'm just saying we've got to take a proactive role in our family's lives. You've you got to position yourselves in the right position. He was trying to come out, but not according to God's plan. In other words, he reached out. How many of you know from the womb to the world is a different atmosphere? It's shell shock for a baby to come out of that warm womb and, and, and a place of comfort and a place where they can hear mama's heartbeat and, and, and everything's being taken care of out into a world where they have to breathe on their own, they have to eat on their own, and they're separated from that mother. It's, it's a totally different atmosphere. So what happened was the baby was reaching for an atmosphere that his head was not. He was reaching for an atmosphere that his head was not. If you are to change atmospheres, you got to get your head right first. Are you all with me? <laughs> there are folks trying to reach for places that their head is not. What do you mean, preacher? <laughs> they're reaching for wealth, but in their head they're broke. They're reaching for sickness, but in their head, I mean reaching for help, but in their head they're still sick. They're reaching for freedom, but in their head they're still bound. The Bible teaches us as a man what thinks in his heart, what so is he. In other words, think is, think is, what you think about, what you think about yourself, what you think about uh, where you are, what you think about the person you are is who you really are. You can say many things, but what do you think? Think is. It doesn't matter if someone has put their approval on it. You're still not coming out. This lady had put her approval on it. Oh, he's firstborn. This is him right here. This is firstborn. And people will tell you, oh, you're on the right track. You're doing the right thing. But if it's not according to God's design, it's not going to happen. Let's move on. The nursemaid put her stamp of approval on something that was not lined up with what God intended. Now, there's a lot of people today, and I'm going to just preach right here. There's a lot of people today that are putting their stamp of approval on things that are not according to God's plan. There's a lot of people saying, well, this is okay and this is okay, and it does not line up with God's Word. It does not line up with the way God wants things to be done, and they're saying that it's okay, but just because people put their stamp of approval on it does not mean that it's okay. There's a lot of people approving a lot of things. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I told our Wednesday night class a couple of nights about the wicked world we're living in, that people are trying to say that pedophilia is not a crime anymore. It's a lifestyle choice. We, we, we are living in a world where, where, where wickedness abounds, and the Bible says in the last days people would call good evil and evil good, and, and we're seeing it happen right before our very eyes. But just because people put their stamp of approval upon it does not mean that it is lined up with God's Word. Hey, you better check what you believe and check what you think with the Bible. 
You better check what people tell you with the Word of God because there are some shysters out there that will tell you all kind of stuff. Amen. The nursemaid put her stamp of approval on it. Because if it does, and, and it, and, but it wasn't right because it didn't line up. So the baby with a scarlet ribbon on his arm draws his arm back in. And the other baby comes out first. In other words, he refused to let somebody else who was out of position stand in his way of coming out. <laughs> Just because somebody else was out of line didn't mean he had to wait. Quit waiting on everybody else to get it right before you get it right. Because there are people out there who don't want to get it right. There are people out there who have no desire to get it right. You know, there's people out there that are bound that have no desire to be free. There are people out there that are sick who have no desire to be well. How do you know that, preacher? Because the life choices they make every day. Let me meddle a little bit. If you are sick with diabetes, that's a big one in the church. Why? Because church folks love to eat. And most of the stuff we eat is very unhealthy. That's why we say grace over it. <laughs> so, diabetes is a big deal in the church. Let me help you. There are people who are diabetic who are overweight. And they're pr praying and believing God for healing, but they're absolutely doing nothing about it, about eating right, about exercising, about doing what they need to do, so they have no desire to be well. Because their lifestyle choices are proven that they really don't want to be well. That is why Jesus went to the man by the pool of Bethesda who had been laying there 38 years and had his bed there. And he asked, Jesus asked him, he said, do you really want to be made whole? And the guy's going, well, I've been laying here 38 years. And Jesus says, but there's nothing about your life that is showing me you're trying to get better. You done brought your bed up in it. You done got comfortable in this mess. You got a teddy bear in the corner. You got your radio over here and all this. And you're comfortable in your mess. So what about your life shows me that you want it to get better? So don't wait on everybody else to try to get it right and to get themselves uh, together before you do. Because if you're constantly waiting on somebody else, you're going to miss life. I've got friends that don't have it all together. And I've got friends that have it more together than I do. But I'm still working on getting everything together. It's a process. <laughs> this baby, the second baby came out first. The other baby had the scarlet ribbon <laughs> around his wrist that labeled him first so that automatically labeled the other baby second but he said I don't care if I was labeled second I'm still coming out what happens when you go to the store ladies and you buy a new suit of clothes do you wear it with the price tag still hanging on it other than mini pearl over there Lord have mercy my load is heavy no you're killing my point Ruby so when you go to the store it has a label on it I walk through the store and my wife has very expensive taste on stuff and I'm like how much is this and she's like well of course you like it <laughs> let's put that on the rack and hope it don't fall off the hanger no but anyway you go to the store and and you buy things, you look at the label, you pay the price for it. When you get home, you have the authority to remove that label. Why? Because you paid for it. People will label you all kind of stuff. They will label you a quitter. They'll label you by your past. They will label you by everything they want to label you by. But watch what this says. The Bible says you have been bought with a price. The price that Jesus Christ paid. Amen. The price that Jesus paid. So because Jesus paid that price, it gives us the authority 
to pull the labels off and say, I don't care what you labeled me, the price has been paid, and I don't have to be labeled by what people labeled me anymore. So even though this baby was labeled second born, he said, I refuse to wear the labels that people put on me. I'm still coming out of this, and whether you want to or not, I'm still coming out. Hey, just because somebody's labeled you don't mean you have to wear that label proudly. I've been bought with a price. I pull the labels of people off. And people constantly try to put them back on you. But guess what? <laughs> this is good. Guess what? When people try to put the labels back on you, you have to say you don't have the authority to put that label on me because the price has already been paid for my life. Amen. The store can't come back and get your new outfit and put the price tag back on it. Not unless they want a black eye. So don't let the world come back and put labels on you that God has paid the price for you to take off. Don't wear these labels. Folks will label you all kind of stuff and to the point that you won't know who you are. That's what, what's wrong with a lot of people today is they have no idea who they are because they wear the labels of everybody except the label that God. If I'm going to wear any label, it's going to say child of the most high. That's the only label I'm that I want to wear is child of God because he paid the price for me. Let's move on. <laughs> so when the baby came out, she noticed that it was the other baby, not the baby with the scarlet ribbon around his wrist. The other baby came out, and it freaked the nursemaid out. And she began to ask this newborn baby questions. It's right there in the book. She said, how is it that you have broken forth? In other words, she says, whoa, hold up, wait a minute. How did you get out when the other one was just right there and stuck his arm out? <laughs> it, it messed with her mind. She said, how in the world did you come out? How did you break through? How did you come out? In other words, she began to scratch her head or pat her weave, whatever she was doing, and she started saying, how in the world did you come out? How, how is this possible? But you know something? When you can come out, in spite of all the odds stacked against you, it always leaves people with questions. How in the world did you make it through that? You know, I, I want to I wanna live my life in such a way that when I go through difficult times, and if you keep living, times are going to come that's hard. Why? It's called life. Life is going to happen. Being a Christian doesn't exempt you from life. Being, being, being saved and on your way to heaven does not exempt you from life. Life is going to happen. And life's going to happen whether you black, white, green, yellow, red, whatever color. Nothing exempts you from life. Let me tell you something about life. It hits us all. It hits us all. Male, female, young, old, life is going to happen. You can't control what life throws at you. But you have absolute control over how you let it affect you. You have absolute control over how you let it and how you respond to it, how it affects you, how you respond to it. I can't control if somebody walks up to me and hurts my feelings, but I can control how I respond to it. I can either pray for them or I can hit them. <laughs> Y'all all looking at me like you would hit me. I would try not to, but it's been hard at times. Y'all are, y'all so holy. I watch Black Friday videos and y'all fighting over toilet paper. Punch somebody in the throat over a roll of paper towels for 50 cents. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I wish folks was piled up at the doors of the church like that. Stampeding to get in God's house. I guess if we had some 50 cent paper towels, we could fill it up. Oh. Uh, just kidding, guys. But the nursemaid said, how did you break forth? How did you get out? I thought for sure you wouldn't have made it out of that. I thought for sure you were going to lose your mind. You know, isn't it awesome when the enemy thinks that we're done for and we make it out and people are standing around going, 
why aren't you in the nut house? Why aren't you somewhere on some medicine just sitting drooling in the corner? How did you come through everything that you went through? How have you dealt with everything you went through? She was, she was like, how did you come forth? I, I thought for sure you would never recover, recover from that. She said, how did you break through? How did you break through? He had such an incredible breakthrough in his life that it left folks asking the questions, how did it happen? You know, when God does something amazing in your life, and you have such a breakthrough, it'll leave people with a question. How did this happen? How did you, how did you break through this? All the odds were against this happening, but it still happened. You know, there, there's people that'll tell you, oh, the odds are against you being successful. The odds are against you in this, and the, the odds are against you in that. But how many know that God is not affected by the odds? God's not affected by the odds. Whatever God wants to happen is going to happen, whether people want it to happen or not. God has a way of working it out according to his plan, and he will move what people he needs to move. He will change what he needs to change so that his will will be accomplished. Now, you can either be one of the people that wants to get on board with what God's doing, or we can be the people that God has to move out the way. But either way, God's plan will come to pass. So I don't know about you, but I'd rather be one of the ones that is part of the plan rather than part of the problem that God has to say, uh-uh, get out of the way. Because God can gently nudge you or God can put it on you. Amen? Let's move on. No one thought it could happen, but it happened. So she called his name Phares. Phares actually means breakthrough. Phares means breakthrough. So watch this. I told you at the beginning of this message that Judah and Tamar got together. And Tamar became pregnant with the seed of praise. Now, the seed of praise produces Phares, which is breakthrough. So praise will always precede your breakthrough. Praise always precedes your breakthrough. Those that will say, well, I need a breakthrough in my life. I need God to do something in my life. If you'd begin to praise him, it is always the prelude to breakthrough. <laughs> That's good stuff right there. So the seed of praise is breakthrough. Praise will always produce breakthrough. So the seed of praise is breakthrough. That is why even in the midst of the storm, learn to give God praise. People wonder how you're able to praise, but all you got to say is, I'm praising my way out. I'm praising my way out. My life may be in a mess, but I'm going to praise my way out. Amen. And the nursemaid tells Pharez, she's all mad about it. Why do people get mad when you break when you break forth? Why do people get mad when you get blessed? I, I've never understood why folks get mad at other folks when they're blessed. Somebody gets a new house, well, you just showing off with that new house instead of being happy for them. Somebody gets a new car, and somebody gets all huffy about it. Well, God didn't give me a new car. I hear this mess all the time, and I'm like, well, if you'd pay tithes, God bless me too. Whoosh. That goes back to my other point. I don't do a lot of counseling because I'm just very blunt. But when you can learn to praise when somebody else comes out, it opens up the door for you to be blessed. Because you can learn to celebrate other people's blessings and other people's successes. Then you should get excited too because the Bible teaches us that God is no respecter of persons. He's not going to do it for them and then not do it for me. So if God done it for them, guess what? Mine's on the way. So I'm going to shout with you so you can shout with me when mine gets blessed. Learn how to celebrate our brothers and our sisters when they get blessed. But she got mad. And she said, your name's going to be Pharez because this breach is on you. This is a baby. And she's all huffy, said, this breach be upon thee. Breach means a violation of standards, the way things are done. Isn't it amazing how people get mad when the, the standard of the way things have always been done is changed? And all my amens left. People get upset why? Because change is inevitable, inevitable, but it is fiercely fought against. 
change is inevitable, but we still fight it tooth and nail because we get comfortable with things a certain way. <laughs> she said, this breakthrough be upon you. Breach means violation of standards. It was a violation of what was expected. You see, there's an expectation among people that if you are faced with certain things, there's a predetermined outcome. Oh, well, they're going through this. The next step is this. Mm -hmm. Well, they're, they're, they're having marital problems. The next step is divorce. Hello? They're having, they're having financial problems. Uh, the next step is they're going to uh, have to file bankruptcy. Oh, that, that church lost some members, so they're going to have to close the doors. Oh, well, 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 well this family left the church, so uh, the church is going down there becomes a preconceived notion of what's going to happen next oh well, well they're having problems out of that girl she's going to be pregnant by this time next year hello it's quiet in here why because we're all guilty of saying those very things it's tough when it hits home we're all guilty of having these preconceived notions oh just give them enough slack they're going to hang themselves we've all said that Oh, you just wait and see. I'm waiting for it to all fall apart right before their eyes. So there's a preconceived notion of what we think is going to happen next. So when she thought the baby with the scarlet ribbon was going to come out first, and when the other one came out, it messed her world up. Why? Because she said this is a violation of what was supposed to happen. But how many of you know when God gets in something, he'll violate the standards of men? He'll violate, he'll violate what's supposed to happen. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people, I'm going to just be honest, y'all know me, I'm very transparent, how many people have came to me and told me, you should never even have life, church. And I said, well, when God's in it, it's a violation of standards. Well, that, that church should have went to somebody else. And I'm like, well, when God's in it, it's God's plan. Amen? So... <laughs> And I'm about to the point where I'm like, like, look, you sh shut up. <laughs> you, you, you get to the point you hear it, you hear it, you hear it. So let's move on. But watch this. So, but after, but there's a breakthrough that is a violation of standards. But watch this. So after Pharez comes out, then the other baby comes out that has the scarlet ribbon around his arm. And his name is called Zara. Now, Zara means sunrise so the seed of praise is breakthrough so praise produces breakthrough and then following the breakthrough comes the sunrise and the Bible says weeping may endure for a night but what joy comes in the what in the morning weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning so praise produces breakthrough, and following breakthrough comes your sunrise. Zerah could not be born first. Why? <laughs> because the sunrise don't come before the breakthrough. When Jacob wrestled with an angel all night long, the Bible says the angel touched the hollow of his thigh, and it became out of joint. The hollow of your thigh is that in your pelvis right there where the ball joint of your femur comes in, and it locks into your pelvis right there. That's the hollow of your thigh. So when the angel touched Jacob right there, his hip bone actually became out of joint, came out of place. And from that day forward, Jacob walked with a limp the rest of his life. Why? Because his hip was out of joint. But Jacob held on even though and fought with an angel all night long, even though his hip was out of place. How many of you have held on when it hurt? Have you tried to hold on even when it hurts? But Jacob said, I can't let go even though I'm hurting. I'm not going to give up even though I'm in pain. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep holding on. going to keep holding on even though I'm hurting, even though the pain is severe. But he told the angel, watch this. The angel said, let me go. The sun is coming up. And Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go unless you bless me. And he blessed him and changed his name to Israel. 
And Jacob walked different for the rest of his life. But he says, you get in your breakthrough, and then the sun comes up. And I want to tell you something. No matter how hard you fight, if you can praise, and that breakthrough comes, the sun will come up. The sun will come up. His name was called Zerah. And after the breakthrough comes the sunrise. The sunrise couldn't come up before the breakthrough. And there's many of you today, and I'm getting ready to close in just a few moments. There's many of you today that may feel like, man, I've been in such a battle. I've been going through so much. I've, I've got these labels on me. I've got, I've got all this stuff on my life, all this stuff that's going on in my mind, all this stuff that's going on in my heart. And, and I just feel like I, I just can't seem to, to find my way out. Get in proper position. What is proper position, preacher? Line yourself up with God's word. Do what God told you to do. Follow God's word. When you get lined up with God's word, you're in position to come out, regardless if anybody else around you is in position or not. Get in position to come out. Get yourself lined up with the word of God. Then, don't worry about the, go ahead. Don't worry about the labels that people have placed on you. Gosh, if I, if I still had on all the labels, I'd look like a billboard. Why? Because people will label you at the drop of a hat. You ever been labeled by somebody that you don't, that don't even know you? I, I've had people try to put labels on me that didn't even know me, and I'm like, you don't even know me. I've had some folks want to label me, and I'm like, you don't know that I hadn't always been saved. People will label you. So get yourself lined up with God's Word. Get yourself lined up with, with what God has for your life. Take the labels off. If you're saved, the price has been paid for you. Take the labels off. People try to put them back on say, uh-uh. You can tote them labels around. I don't need them. I don't want them. I'm not labeled anymore. And then when you come out, God will bring you out in such a way it will leave people scratching their head. Going, how did you come out of this? How did you break forth from this? How is it possible that you broke forth? You see, sometimes we struggle privately. But God always brings us out publicly. God always brings you out where people see it. Line yourself up with God. Refuse to have the labels. Walk into your breakthrough. And then rejoice as the sun comes up. Because it always doesn't have to be like that. There is good days to be had. There is good times to be had. There is a future and a hope. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. In other words, there are good days. There are better days. Why? Because the Lord said, like I said, weeping may endure for a night, but there is joy coming. You have to trust in that, that there are going to be days where things can get better. There are going to be days when you're going to have a better life, where it's not always going to be dark. It's not always going to be a, a struggle. The house of Pharaohs is a house of breakthrough. In Ruth chapter 4 and verse 12, we read a story about Boaz. And he wants to marry Ruth. Well, there's somebody else in line to marry Ruth. So Boaz goes before the elders of the church. And he says, or the elders, and he says, I want to marry Ruth. Does anybody object to it? Watch this. And they said, no, we don't object. It's okay. You can go ahead and marry Ruth. And in Ruth, and in Ruth chapter 4 and verse 12, I want you to read it when you get time. Powerful story. One of the elders stands up and pronounces a blessing over Ruth and Boaz. And that blessing is, may your house be 
as the house of favor is. That's the blessing he pronounced on her. In other words, may your house be a house of breakthrough. So we know the story goes on and, and Ruth and Boaz get married and they have a son. And his name is Obed. O-B-E-D. He wasn't cool enough to be O-V-E-D. No. But his, his name was Obed. Check this out though. And the Bible says when Obed was born, Naomi, who was Ruth's former mother-in-law, was old and passed the years to bear a child. When she picked up the baby and she pulled it to her chest, life come back into her and she became the baby's nursemaid. So what had dried up broke forth and began to produce again. Why? Because of the blessing of the house of Pharaohs. Hey, that, 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 that blessing goes and it is such a powerful blessing. It's a blessing of breakthrough. And even at all these years after Pharaohs was born, when that blessing was pronounced over the marriage of Ruth and Boaz, when their baby was born, that breakthrough was still evident. Would you stand with me all over the house? And if your family's here, I want you to get with your families because I want to bless you this morning. Join hands with your family members. As the, the pastor of this house, which would be the elder of this house, just as they did over Ruth and Boaz, I want to speak that blessing over each family here today. That your house and this house as a church would be as the house of favor is. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, I thank you for these amazing people. God, I thank you for what you're doing in their lives. I thank you for this church that you've blessed us with. But God, every family that is represented, every person here today, God, I bless them in the name of Jesus. And as the elders decreed, I decree as the elder of this house, may their houses be as the house of favor is. God, may their houses be houses of breakthrough. God, whatever it is they are needing, may the breakthrough come. And God, may Life Church, this house, whoo, be a house of breakthrough. God, that where breakthrough is experienced by every person that enters this place. God, where breakthrough is experienced in every area. God, I speak this blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. That it is done in Jesus' name. May our houses be as the house of favor is. Oh, God, we thank you. And where you're at right now, just begin to thank God for the blessings on your home. And just take a few moments where you're at and just thank you.